Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Give Love, Show Love. My name's Dave Sleet, and I'll be your host for this evening. We have, over the last few weeks now, been talking to various different people from various different backgrounds and communities about the importance of coming together at a time of huge hardship across all of our communities. This evening, I'd like to introduce you to somebody who has experienced the importance of community, has benefited from community, and is now surviving against the backdrop of their professional world suffering, probably like not many other businesses. But we're going to speak to Miss Birmingham, Chantelle Louise, who hey. has not only experienced the business world that she is in. Hey, look, she's come on screen already. Look at that. Hey, um, <laughs> give me a second, guys. Come on, let me do the intro. Shut. <laughs> Chantel has been involved in the entertainment business and is now surviving despite the fact that the entertainment business is struggling extremely hard in the UK as a result of COVID. So, without further ado, let's now bring Chantel on screen. Miss Birmingham, good evening. Uh, how are you? I'm fabulous. It's great to see you at the right time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> how's oh, how's your day you. been? How's things gone? Um, all right, all right. I've um, been working on my trading and um, been working from home today. So, um, yeah, I've had quite a busy day. Fab. Now, you mentioned trading. We're going to come to that in, in a few moments. Um, but what, why don't you give the, the audience at home a chance to get to understand your journey a little bit better, where you've been, how you've got to where you are today? Okay. Um, first of all, I started by working with The Only Way is Essex as a TV extra. That's how I ended up in the entertainment industry. Um, I got this offer, someone sent me a message and said, do you want to be a TV extra? So I was like, yeah, I'll do it 100%. Jumped on it and I was on my train. My um, my car was actually off-road at the time, so um, it was a bit of a struggle to get down to London, but I made it, and um, that was the start of my journey in the entertainment industry. And that... That must have been quite a daunting prospect because you didn't join the show right at the very beginning, did you? No, it had been probably about eight, nine years in until I joined. So um, the show was already established, everybody mm. was already known, all the cast members were known, and um, I just got in there and got involved. <laughs> and, and this is one of the things that we, we know about community is when communities are established and you're able to really kind of have that connection with people when someone comes into it that hasn't been there right from the beginning or hasn't had that chance to get to know everybody it can be really daunting can't it yeah 100 percent. because i went on my own the person who i was supposed to go with he didn't even come so i was like oh my god i'm gonna do this by myself I'm going to be around all these celebrities, all these TV extras. I don't know who anyone is, but um, I've done it. <laughs> just having uh, just a sound connection. Just give me two seconds. Until I joined. So um, the show... There we go. Look, see, there we go. That's better. Now, so you join the show. It's already established. And... What was that like? What was that com that community spirit like as you kind of arrived? Um, as I arrived, the community, it was already there. So I just had to try and fit in somewhere with the extras or with whoever. I just had to make friends. 
do you know what I mean? The, the community was already there. I just had to join in. But it was actually a loving community. Everyone was so welcoming and they took me under their wing and I just got involved and um, started networking. And like the first time I'd gone on air with them, um, I'd met a couple of people in London and in Essex, I met them all on set, but we exchanged numbers and kept in touch with each other to this day. And we're actually really good friends now. And you've benefited from that right from that very first kind of set of introductions, haven't you, really? Yeah, 100%, because, I mean, once I'd come home and I posted it on social media, oh, my God, I've been on set with Tagwe, it was amazing. I posted all the pictures, me with the celebrities and whatnot. It just took off from there. I was getting uh, inbox messages from um, film directors, script writers, and then I was getting these invites to come and be on this film and that film and this film set. And um, the first part that I got offered after Tawi was to be in a film called The Death Promise. And um, I was a TV extra in that film, but I had a character with lines. So um, that was really daunting as well, because that was the first time I was going to be speaking in, in an actual role. Mm. But um, it opened up some crazy doors that I just stepped straight through and um, got into the entertainment industry off that first ladder rung through being with um, The Only Way is Essex. And I think a lot of people would, would kind of understand how daunting that could have that experience must have been of kind of stepping into a community that was already established, a show that's already established, and, and finding your own way. What do you think made the difference for you? Because thousands of people attempt TV extras and thousands of people don't stick to it, don't, don't make that, that breakthrough. What, what do you think it was for you that, that got you past that point? Um, I think once they welcomed me and I felt comfortable and stuff, that was like my little platform to just keep going. Once I had that experience, I was like, oh my God, I love this. I want to do this so much more. So then when I got the next offer to go on another film set, that's when I really started to network and ask questions about how do I get into modeling? How do I um, promote myself? So uh, that's where it all started. So um, it gave me a load of confidence and um, a quick boost as well to just go for it. Yeah. It's the words you used there, confidence. Do you think before you took that leap of faith to, to get into the, the extras work, do you think you had that confidence? Um, not initially, not to go into that industry. Um, basically, I took 10 years out of the industry. I used to be a dancer back in the day. So I was confident back then when I was dancing and I was doing performing and whatnot, but then I had 10 years out of the industry totally. So I've had my children, I've got my stretch marks and my war wounds. So I did lose my confidence because I'd been through quite a lot in that 10 years. Mm. So um, yeah, it, it gave me that self-esteem back and that drive and enthusiasm and that feeling of being able to do anything that you put your mind to. and. When an opportunity comes to you, just grab it with both hands and just drive through it, just do it. It gave me that just do it feeling. And it's, it's phenomenal that just do it feeling when it kicks in because it doesn't go away, does it? It takes a lot for it, it to break don't... once you've got it back. Yeah, it's like once your mind is stretched to a certain capacity, it doesn't go back to where it was, do you know what I mean? So mm. it's just been onwards and upwards from that first moment, stepping on set with The Only Way Is Essex. It's brilliant. So you've gone through that. You've, like you say, you've, you've had your war wounds um, and come, come back from those. The... The journey to Miss Birmingham, what was that like? That was another crazy journey. But um, as I said, everything started from that first moment when I went with The Only Way is Essex. So it just opened all these other doors and I was getting all these offers to do this and do that. And um, this company contacted me 
um, called Miss Sovereign, and they asked me if I wanted to represent my city and take part in this pageant. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I was just saying yes to everything that was happening. So um, I just I just ran with it, basically. But um, that was an amazing experience, being Miss Birmingham and representing my city, because there was a lot involved. I had to do um, campaigns, charities, earning money for charities and stuff like that, and um, just representing my city. I would do um, appearances all over the place, club appearances, appearances in like the, um, what's the place called? Um, what was it called? I can't even remember, but I was just everywhere, up and down the city, just doing these appearances and um, meet and greets. And the thing with, with pageants you know, over, over recent years is they've really had a bit of a bad knock, haven't they? The, the, the entire approach to, to pageants has really kind of been misunderstood and, and the benefit that they bring to, to communities and charity groups across the country and the world when we look at, at, at the larger pageants is, is quite phenomenal. Yeah, do it you, is. Do definitely. you think that that platform that the, the Miss Birmingham pageant gave you helped you beyond what you'd had prior to that? Yeah, it definitely helped. It actually helped with my confidence even more. But um, I was able to start speaking around people and speaking to different people on all different levels and different backgrounds. So um, it just opened up a whole new world for me. And I realised that um, I wanted to actually help in the community as well. Do you know what I mean? So um, that's when I started to get involved with like children, community, charities, and just helping out wherever I could help. And um, I took it on the radio. I got interviewed on um, a Birmingham radio station. So um, yeah, the beauty pageants really, really helped with a lot of different things, to be honest. Kind of opened up doors for you in, in a way that connected to the, the wider community in a way that maybe hadn't been there before. Is that fair? Yeah, definitely. Because um, once I had earned this staff, I was then getting offers to be ambassadors for different companies and being the face of certain brands. So um, being an ambassador, I started getting sent loads of products, gym wear, clothing, fashion clothing, um, sunglasses and stuff like that. I was getting sent free stuff to just put on and promote for these companies. So, um, yeah, Miss Birmingham opened up that door for me, the ambassador world and branding and stuff like that. Yeah. And that confidence and that connection to the community doesn't go away, does it? It's the, the relationship that you have with, with your community now is almost unbreakable. Yeah, it's definitely unbreakable because being Miss Birmingham, and I come from Birmingham, I don't live in Birmingham now, but I come from Birmingham, that's my hometown. Mm. It's like we've all just got so much love for each other now and respect, and it's just like we're one big family now. Do you know what I mean? And even on like my social media platforms, it's like it's just love everywhere. Give love, show love. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and that's kind of one of the reasons why we wanted to make sure that your story and, and your experience of how that community has allowed you to grow as an individual but it's also supported how the community has grown as well hasn't it yes definitely it's like everything's just growing now do you know what I mean everybody's growing we're all working together we're collaborating together and um, we're all helping each other and supporting each other. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like everybody's got a role now to do something to help somehow or to help some children or to help even in terms of like with racism and things that are going on in the world. Mm. There's a brand called um, the Bar Movement that's um, Brothers Against Racism and also an ambassador for them. And that's actually run by a black guy and a white guy that just got zero tolerance to racism. So it's brought that together as well. And mm. it, that brand is all about um, one race, the human race. We've mm. all got to show love to each other. We're all here. We live on this planet. 
and um, I'm an ambassador for them as well and also a trustee. They've recently offered me the role to be a trustee of their brand. So, um, and, and yeah, it's a, just That's a up. huge accolade, isn't it, to, to be brought to, to that inclusion? Right, yes, so congratulations definitely. for that. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. And when we, when you look at, back at your journey, um, and you know, I know we've touched on other stuff with Towie, and we've touched on stuff with um, Miss Miss Birmingham. That's not just who you are, is it? No, there's many different layers. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think. The fact that in, in going through the journey that, that you've outlined so far, we haven't even touched on what's happening around COVID, on the impact that that's had on, on the community work that, that you've been doing. But do you think that before COVID, the, the work that was being done was ready for a crash like COVID? No, I don't think we were prepared for it at all. We wasn't ready for it. No one was expecting it. And it's affected a lot of us. It's affected a lot because um, a lot of my jobs have been cancelled. Music videos, the bar movement, we can't move forward either. So it's like we're at a standstill now where there's just nothing going on. Mm. I've even had um, stuff cancelled until last week. So... It's been really, really difficult for us. Yeah, and I mean, when we we've spoken before, and and you mentioned a phrase that really stuck stuck with me, the idea that all of the work that had been done up until kind of January, February this year, it all kind of got stuck in a rabbit hole. Yeah, and that's where we felt we was. It, and it it kind of stuck with me because. When we look at the resilience that all of the community groups try and instill in the communities that they work with, it's almost like we forgot the resilience for ourselves. Yeah. And you've, you've since kind of decided that in order for you to survive, and for you to then carry on helping those groups. You're going to do something different, aren't you? Or you're doing something yeah. different, should I say? Yeah, I had to jump on it, David. There was just like no choice because the modeling work, everything just came to a standstill. So I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? Mm. And is what I've done. I got a part-time job and that lasted for a couple of months. I was on furlough for a bit and now that job's totally gone. So it was like, oh shoot, like really, what am I going to do? So I started trading Forex. <laughs> now, people will, like we just did, we just have a bit of a giggle at that because there is a huge uncertainty and unknown around trading Forex, isn't there? There is an uncertainty and an unknown. A lot of people fear this industry. But I don't. I just got stuck in, David. I had to. I had no other options left. So it was just like, you know what? I've got to take it. The opportunity came for me. Just do it, Chan. Just jump on. Just do it. That's like my motto now. Just do it. <laughs> so as briefly and as straightforwardly, let's get a bit of an explanation about Forex and, and what it is that you're doing at the moment. So with the Forex, it's basically a foreign exchange um, and it's a digital platform where we're able to earn money online from our mobile phones. So is what I've done, I am um, plugged into this program that are teaching me to trade. I had to pay a sign up fee and I had to pay a monthly fee as well. So the monthly fee was paying for the education because I didn't have a clue about trading. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't understand all these colours and all these lines going on the screen. I was like, oh my gosh. But I got my head around it. It took me about two weeks on the programme to really get into it, understand how it works. And um, it's quite simple, really. Um, when we go on holiday and we exchange our currency for another currency, that's basically a trade because we've either 
got extra money through the currency that we've exchanged it for or we've lost money. That's all we're doing, but we're doing it digitally on the computer or on my mobile phone, whichever one is nearest to me. <laughs> and <laughs> I, mean, I, I did a little bit of background on Forex um, as it's become known, Forex as in for foreign ex exchange. exchange. Yes. Um, and it's something that has been around since the Crusades. This it's isn't been around new. forever. <laughs> you know, it's been around as long as we've been making promises about currency. And yeah, that goes back to, to the Crusades. So <laughs> the idea that this is something to be scared of or is, 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 you know, a flash in the pan, as it were, doesn't really, doesn't really sit, does it? No, it's nothing to be scared of at all because I see it as this is a way for normal people to be able to earn extra income from home and potentially just change your life totally. Because, I mean, this industry, it's turning people into millionaires. You can make silly money. Mm. And, I mean, with our platform, I'm on IM Academy. With that, with that academy, sorry, with that program, is what they've done. They've got two separate sides of the business. So you can get involved, learn how to trade Forex, and make money from your phone every day, even while you're asleep. Trades are ticking over, money's ticking over. Mm. But then there's a the second side to the business, where you can grow your actual team, your own team and your own academy. So once you start signing people up and um, training people, helping people, getting your team to grow a team, the company pay you residual income every single month. Hmm. And um, it's just crazy amounts of money. Some of my uh, colleagues are earning like 10 grand, 20 grand, 100 grand every single month just in residual income. So it's, it's crazy. It's a way for normal people like myself to get out of that rabbit hole that we fell into during the pandemic because it was a difficult time. Like everything just got cut off. Mm. So um, it was a way out of the black hole for me. <laughs> and it's it's also boosted your um, your own confidence, hasn't it? Because that moment yeah. of collapse where the entertainment industry was completely decimated because of the pandemic, you've been able to, one, carry on earning and supporting the family but you've also been able to use that to keep your mental health up and supporting other people yeah a hundred percent because it's given me something to do at home do you know what i mean at one point i was decorating and sorting out because i just relocated from birmingham to where i am now so um, when the pandemic first kicked in, I was getting organised and doing this and that. But then when I started on the programme, I um, it, it was like an education. It was like a course. So I'm at home. I'm on the computer. I'm learning how to trade. I'm plugging in. But then I'm getting involved with another massive community of people. There's thousands and thousands of people that are involved with this. Hmm. And um, just to mention a couple of names, Floyd Mayweather, he trades on our platform, the boxer, Floyd Money Mayweather. Oh, we're going to go um, name dropping also... now, ladies and gentlemen. Brace yourself. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I've also collaborated with James Locke from The Only Way Is Essex. So we've collaborated offset and we're now business partners trading Forex with um, IM Academy. And, and this is you know, something that I wanted to, to kind of come to before we kind of tie this as to how can communities kind of benefit from this. And was the entertainment industry has always been a fickle mistress, hasn't she? she you know, different yeah. tastes, different trends, different shows come, they go, and and people have to find different routes to survive. Yeah. Do you do you think what we're seeing with the entertainment industry at the moment is having more of a negative impact on the communities around you? And you know, take Birmingham as an example where communities are so dependent on that entertainment. Do you think this is yeah, having, it's having a really bad sorry. effect now? Yeah, it's having a massive effect because um, 
people have lost their jobs. They've got nothing to do. So a lot of people are falling into depression. They're getting anxiety, and it's just getting crazy out there. So the fact that we can offer another opportunity where you can earn money, you're welcomed into our community to work alongside us. It's just, um, it's like a lifeline, what I'm doing now, to be honest. And like you say, there are thousands of people that are involved and there are thousands within the network and it's, it's built an online community rather than the, the community um, that we know are struggling. Um, yeah. So how do you see the entertainment industry bouncing back from this? Do you see the entertainment industry bouncing back? I don't know. I'm hoping so. And um, there are jobs lined up for me because I've got a main role to do in a film mm -hmm. where um, I'm going to be playing a cartel leader. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there's a few things. <laughs> there are a few things lined up, music videos. We're just waiting for the go-ahead. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully we can continue after this. But if not, I've still got my trading, I've still got my Forex to focus on and, and grow and grow my team and grow my trading accounts. So if anybody wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to do it? Um, you can get in touch with me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, my Instagram is Chantal underscore Louise underscore Shanti. That's C-H-A-N-T-I 1111. And my Facebook details is Chantal Louise Shanti. So, um, yeah, feel free to get in touch if you want to um, earn some money on the side, earn some money from home, if you've lost your job, get in touch with me and then um, we'll you're, take you're, you to our win. You, you said, to me, said to me earlier, this was so easy that you're teaching your children to do this. Is that right? Yes, yeah. My kids wow. are learning. <laughs> Wow, so we have um, yeah, the next generation of, of traders to keep us out of financial difficulties for the future. Yeah, the kids are coming up and my daughter, she's 11, she's coming 12 and she loves it. I put her on my demo account and she's like, oh my God, mom, I just made 500 pounds, I just made 300 pounds. And she's just amazed by it. So, um, yeah, the kids are coming up and they're getting involved. They're actually already involved with what I was doing. Um, they're little baby models. And um, I brought them on a catwalk with me. They've done a couple of paid jobs, to be honest. But as I said, everything's just come to a standstill now. So um, they're still under my wing. <laughs> We're creating our own platform and our own brand. And, um, yeah, they're going to be little mini traders. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of hoping that some of those trades are going to be benefiting the community around you. And I know we've spoken before about you you wanting to make sure that that community work carries on. And that's very much what Give Love, Show Love is about, is making sure those community groups can keep surviving. So any of the those organisations that are connected to running community groups that want to find other ways of raising revenue. Forex might just be an avenue for you that you don't have to wait for, for government, for, for lottery funding to all be worked out. This is a way that you can actually start generating revenue for, for yourselves. Is my understanding of it, I'm not promoting, not advertising, just think it might be an option worth looking at. What do you say? Definitely. 100% definitely. I think everyone should get involved with this. I mean, if you've come from a difficult background like myself and you've had a rough ride, do you know what I mean? This is something that's simple. You can just do it from your phone. I've got trades in right now that are making money as we speak. Do you know what I mean? So um, get involved. The next generation of Bill Gates is being built through Forex. <laughs> It's phenomenal. It is. Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for your time this evening um, and, and for sharing just how that journey has been to have that one moment that says, I can just do it, and taking that confidence 
and that confidence just growing and growing and growing and allowing you to get to a point where when your industry falls away behind you, it's okay because there is another option. You don't have to fall down that rabbit hole and if you do fall into it, you don't have to stay there for long. Exactly, 100%. Well, part of Give Love, Show Love is for people to get involved and to donate to the, the charity so we can promote and support those other charity groups. Now, Forex is obviously a, an earning platform for, for individuals to, to be able to, to earn for themselves and their families, etc. And businesses, we know businesses trade as well. But if you don't want to go down the Forex route, and, but you still want to support those communities that are in your area, get in touch. If you would like support, if you run an organization that you want support from the Give Love, Show Love campaign, get in touch. All of the, the contact details are coming up on your screens and you can make a difference. Programs have been put available to make sure that those community groups can benefit long term. Build the resilience within the communities. That experience that Chantel explained to us all about walking into a community that's already established, it's hard. We know that. But if we can help those communities to make sure that they can support the people that they need to, we can make a difference to absolutely everybody. So please, please, donate to Give Love, Show Love and together we can make a difference. Until next week, I want to say thank you to Chantel for her time. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Chantel, yes, it's been amazing. Thank you so much for enjoyed having it. me. It's been yeah, a pleasure, I've loved and it. I'm, I'm really grateful that we got to, got to talk um, and, and share just how important that just do it attitude has been for you. In, in getting to where you are now and surviving the collapse of, of an industry that, that was so important. But until next week, to everyone, wherever you are, take care and see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Amis TV is here. To restore, rebuild, revive the nation. We can never appreciate the hardship that creates a feeling of having nothing, but we can create the change that makes a difference. Join us, and together we can have an impact. It's time for us to change the narrative and extend our humanity to the entire world. Love is kind. It is not self-seeking. Let us extend our love and kindness in the best possible way we can. Freely you have received the love of God. Freely give back to society. Extend a blessing to someone out there. One can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. We believe in our communities and we believe in our youths. Let's work together and make a difference. Our world needs you to be a part of a revolutionary change. United we stand, divided we fall. Give love, show love. Hashtag give love, show love.